some way to solve. All right, so I'm talking about uh, an instrument which is not CMB related, uh, except that you can do cross correlations uh, with CMB, which is, uh, I thought would be, would be interesting for this audience. Um, so this is the uh, hydrogen intensity and in real time analysis experiment, or, or HIRAX. Uh, it's a BAO 21 centimeter uh, experiment. So I always like to give a, a brief introduction to the basic science for the, the students, or especially in this case because it's a mostly CMB audience. Uh, so the, the 21 centimeter transition is the, from the hyperfine spin flip transition in neutral hydrogen. Uh, and this is becoming a, an important uh, cosmological probe uh, because there's a lot of neutral hydrogen in the universe. Uh, and uh, it's a for classically forbidden transition, so the lifetime of the excited state is 10 to the 7 years. So it's an intrinsically very narrow line. Uh, so you get a very good determination of the redshift to the neutral hydrogen that you're observing, um, just inherent in the, in the measurement. Uh, so it allows you to build up these large three-dimensional uh, tomographic maps of, of structure. Uh, the thing that we're primarily looking at is the baryon acoustic oscillation. So this is, you know, back before the CMB, you have in the, the primordial plasma, gravity wants to collapse over densities, and um, electromagnetic radiation provides the restoring force. You set up these acoustic oscillations, and the sound horizon at the time of recombination uh, gives you a characteristic scale of 150 megaparsecs. Um, this has been seen uh, in uh, optical surveys, uh, SDSS and others. Um, but you can think of this as, as kind of an, an inefficient way of, of mapping out this structure. In each one of these, these characteristic uh, features, there's order 10 to the 5 galaxies. Um, so it's kind of overkill to be looking at individual galaxies. So the idea with the 21 centimeter uh, intensity mapping uh, is that you can look at the neutral hydrogen line emissions from the, the aggregate uh, hydrogen in that whole structure uh, and you don't have to resolve the, the individual galaxies. Um, this allows you to have instruments with larger fields of views, larger beams, and uh, cover more sky and get more statistical power all at once. Um, conversely, the, the difficulty is that the signal from, from this line emission is, is very, very small. Uh, so it's about 0.1 millikelvin, and you've got the primary foreground is the galaxy sitting there blazing away at, at 10 to the 5 kelvin. Um, so you need a lot of sensitivity to be able to get down to uh, this signal, which is why it hasn't been done yet. Um, but it, this uh, H1 signal has been seen in, in cross-correlation uh, with optical surveys, um, beginning in, in 2010 with Chang et al. Uh, used the, the Green Bank Telescope and the D2 survey. Um, so we know that it's out there, we know that it exists, you just have to get sufficient sensitivity um, to see it. So the thing that we're doing is uh, building large arrays of, of telescopes. Uh, so Hyrax is uh, in South Africa. It's uh, led by the University of KwaZulu-Natal, uh, which is in, in Durban on the East Coast. It uh, includes a number of other uh, universities and institutions in South Africa and in the United States and in Canada. Uh, in particular, we're working uh, in collaboration with a lot of the people who work on China, which is another 21 centimeter experiment in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, the final, because people always want to know, where is this thing? Um, the, the final array will, will be near the, the SKA site in the Karoo. Uh, so it's a radio astronomy preserve. They have uh, strict regulations about radio transmissions and uh, uh, EFI in the area. Uh, we're building a uh, prototype eight element array uh, near Johannesburg, which will eventually be incorporated as an outrigger uh, to the main array to provide uh, better end of the resolution. Uh, so the array itself will hopefully someday consist of a uh, closed patch array of 1024 uh, 6 meter dishes uh, operating frequencies between 400 and 800 megahertz, which corresponds to redshift to 0.8 to 2.5. Uh, and the idea is to operate in drift scan, so you just point all of your dishes in one direction and let the sky do the scanning for you, uh, and then repoint every half year or so and build up stripes on the sky and eventually survey most of the, the southern sky. Um, Primary goal is, as I said, the BAO, but you have a large uh, area survey. There's a lot of other things you can do, uh, particularly with us for radio transients, pulsar searches, and FRBs are, are becoming very interesting. Uh, and as I mentioned before, working with a lot of, of Chime people, it's kind of a sister experiment to, to Chime. Um, we're using a similar digital backend, and the feed design is, is based on, on Chime. Um, but the notable difference is that uh, Chime is using these, these kind of half pipe. Uh, receivers for using more traditional uh, parabolic dishes, which will hopefully be easier to baffle uh, and to, to calibrate. Uh, so moving into the, the cross-correlations realm, uh, there are a number of, of different uh, line tracers that you can use for intensity mapping. Uh, 21 centimeters is, is one of them. Uh, there are also people in 
upcoming and planned experiments uh, about using CO, C2, and then many of these, these other lines that allow you to, to probe different uh, redshift periods and then looking at different angular scales with different instruments. Um, but for us, uh, uh, we're using the 21 centimeter. Uh, and we, so we would like to uh, cross correlate with the uh, uh, CMB lensing. Uh, and uh, this work has, has been largely done by people at UKZN, uh, Professor Kavi Moodley and students of his, uh, Heather Prince and Arlie Panin. Uh, there are a lot of things that lead you to think this is, this is, is going to be promising. Um, there's a good rhetoric overlap with, uh, with um, uh, lensing and uh, 21 centimeter intensity mapping. Um, our redshift range is, is near the, the peak of the, the lensing kernel. Uh, and it's probing similar kind of physical scales. Uh, however, there's, there's a problem if you try to do uh, just a power spectrum um, two-point uh, correlation. Um, the, the, the filtering that we think will be commonly done with these 21 centimeter experiments is this, this wedge filtering, which maybe you've, you've heard of. But uh, it, the problem is that it ends up removing uh, these, these small uh, modes along the line of sight, so uh, small uh, K modes, uh, large physical scale, which are precisely the ones that you want for this cross-correlation. Um, so the solution that, that Kevin has, has come up with um, is to use a, a bispectrum instead uh, and you use two different copies of the, uh, this, uh, the 21 centimeter intensity mapping field and one copy of the, the CMB lensing field uh, and you use these, these two different um, uh, small scale 21 centimeter modes that are coupled by a long wavelength um, uh, matter mode to, to recover that, that, that long wavelength matter mode. Um, and this is a, a similar to techniques that have been, been used in, in CMB lensing reconstruction, so we think this is, this is not a, a crazy thing. Uh, you just have to know to do it and that the, the two-point correlation won't work. Um, it does require uh, very high spectral resolution, but this is something that we will have with, with Hyrax. We have uh, roughly a thousand channels between 400 and 800 megahertz. Uh, and so Kevin's done some, uh, some simulations using uh, ACT as uh, a test case, but you get similar results for SPT or uh, kind of other current generation uh, CMB experiments. Um, and the, the takeaway is uh, that there should be very high uh, uh, signal to noise on, on this cross-correlation detection um, for current generation uh, CMB experiments. Uh, so that's the, uh, the punchline is uh, uh, the two-point correlation probably won't work, uh, but if you use the bispectrum, that's, that's the way to go. Um, and Hyrax is, is currently uh, funded by the, the South African government um, for the uh, first 128 elements, the, the Pathfinder kind of array, um, and uh, the construction of that should be beginning late 18, 2018 optimistically.